If we want to create multiple variables of the same type, for example, we want to create 10 integers. Now, instead of writing int a1 and then here int a2, so on and so forth, we can use arrays. So how to declare an array? Well, for that we can say int because we want to create an array of integers. We can also create an array of floats, of strings, of booleans, of any type of variable. And we denote an array by using square brackets. So this is an array of integers and I will name it data and we have declared, well, an array of integers basically. Now here we just declared an array. In order to instantiate it we need to say equal to new int array and we need to provide the size in these, well, square brackets. So here we are saying 10. This basically means that our array is going to have 10 elements. Now arrays are fixed size, so whichever number you type here, you cannot change it later. So you cannot say here data is equal to new int array and then say 20. That is not possible because we cannot change. So we cannot say that array will have less or more elements than what we have specified here. Now regarding the values of the elements that are in our array. So we have 10 elements, 10 integers basically. So what are the values of those integers? Well basically it's zero because we did not specify the value of those integers, the default is zero basically. So as I said, we have 10 integers and each of them or the value of each integer is zero. If you remember in the lecture about loops, I told that for loop is used well to process arrays. So now we are going to use a for loop. So we are going to say for int i is equal to zero. Here we are going to say as long as i is less than data, which is our well basically array, so it will be data dot length. And I will I will explain what this basically means. This data dot length here will return how many elements are in this data array. In our case, it will return 10 because, well, we specified here that we have 10 elements. And that's how we can use, well, the for loop to process arrays. One other thing regarding arrays is that if we want to access a specific element, we need to use an index. So we use data, which is the name of our array, and we use these square brackets and inside of it we provide an index. Now one more thing is that arrays are zero based. What that means? Well, basically the first element in the array is not at index one, it's at index zero. And because of that, we are saying here for int i, which is equal to zero. We are not saying for int i equal to one, we are saying for int i equal to zero. And here we can use data and we can pass this i, which is our integer, and it will be zero in the beginning and it will increment each time so each time it will, well, be plus one. So that way we can process our arrays. And here I will use a random range variable to populate our array. So let's say from 10 up to 100. And this will basically assign for each element in our array. So from zero up to data dot length, which is 10, but not including 10 because, well, that's the last or basically that will be index out of bounds. So it will populate each element with a random range from 10, well, to 100. Now, regarding what I just said, that we will not go up to data dot length, that's because, as I mentioned before, that our arrays are zero based. So the last element is not at index data dot length, it's at index data dot length minus one, because as I said, data dot length will return how many elements are in that array, which is 10. But if we go from zero up to 10, then we will have 11 elements. And that's why we are not going to go up to, well, data dot length. Instead, we are going to data dot length minus one, which is the index of the last element in the array. Now I will create one more for loop in order to debug dot log and output our data, well, array, just so that I can show you that we are actually populating that array with, well, random variables. So if I go back here and if I run it, we will see that, well, our elements have, well, random integers or they are assigned, well, with random integers, basically. 
Now there are many things that we can do with our arrays, but for now this will be enough because this is just a brief introduction and later on we will see through real world examples how can we use and manipulate our arrays. Just remember that if you want to access a specific element you need to use that index. So here we can say int uh, a excuse me, is equal to data and let's say the element that's at index 4 which is the fifth element. So don't forget from 0 up to 4 which is 5 elements. So this is the fifth element in the array. And also don't forget, well be careful not to use data.length in order to access the last element. It's data.length minus 1 because, well, if you use data.length, I explained before, you will have index out of bounds exception. And also when you're processing arrays in a for loop, make sure that you are seeing as long as i is less than data.length. Don't use less than or equal to because then the loop will execute plus one more time than the length of the array and you will have index out of bounds exception. So just keep that in mind.